Okay, so now what we're doing, I want you to look here. Notice there's coefficients. First thing, to do any of these problems, you must have a balanced chemical reaction in front of you. So if these are not balanced, then you're going to have to balance it. But I'm pretty sure all the reactions in the packet are balanced. So if they're not for some reason, check and fix it if you have to. Uh, first thing, though, the, what we're going to do, like, let me just show you an example of a problem. So we'll just write how many hydrogen molecules, okay, which is, you know, H2, must react to form 800 ammonia molecules. So this is the type of problem you're going to be seeing. I mean, if you, once you realize what it is asking, it's very simple. But again, the big challenge with a lot of this stuff for you guys right now will be picking out what is being asked and how to solve it. So the question is asking us, how many H molecules, how many H2 molecules, okay, so we're asking about this, must react to form 800 ammonia molecules. Does it mention N2? Does it mention nitrogen anywhere? No. No, it doesn't. So for this problem, you're not using nitrogen. Okay? It doesn't matter. What you'll assume is that there's excess nitrogen. There's enough nitrogen there for a reaction to take place, which we'll get into in a minute. But for right now, all you care about is what you're starting with, what you're ending with. So it's basically saying you have, you have 800 molecules of NH3 produced. We want to go back in time and figure out how many H2 molecules were needed to make that. So all you're going to do, you start out, you write 800 NH3 molecules. Now, let me also remind you of one thing here. A lot of you, I noticed, have uh, slowly slacked off in terms of writing out your units, labeling everything, which, you know, I will be honest with the empirical formula stuff, it's not as, it's not as necessary because, you know, you understand it pretty well, and it's just really, you don't need it to solve the problems exactly. However, with this, if you are not diligent in labeling, okay, writing down the formulas, writing down the units, writing down everything, you will not be able to solve the problems correctly because you won't know how. Yeah, you do. In this case, you have to write the NH3 of the molecules. Otherwise, you're not going to be sure how to set up your conversion factors that we have to do. So you need to get back into the, to where you were at the beginning, where you were writing everything down. Okay, because again, this will be checked. This part is what I'm going to be checking, too, when I collect this again, is did you label everything? Did you write everything down? Okay? So just be aware. Now, now what must go down here? What unit must be down here in this one? Yep, we know that. Good. Now, what are we going to? It wants to know how many what? Molecules of H2. See so right down? Molecules of H2. Now, the way, where you're going to get these numbers from is actually really simple. You're just simply using the coefficients because that's the ratio of H2 to NH3 in this reaction. So what is uh, hydrogen's coefficient? Three, so you put a three there. So, all we're going to do when we're converting from one substance to another in a chemical reaction now, we are using the coefficients in the reaction to tell us the ratio. Like this reaction tells us for every three hydrogens we have, two NH3s will be produced. So that's what we're setting up here is basically proportion. So if there's three H2 molecules, then how many NH3 molecules do we have? Two. Two. And now you just go 800 times 3 is 2,400 divided by 2 is, uh, 12. is yeah, 1,200. So these cancel. You're left with H2. <coughs> and, yeah, it's not meant to be some grand challenge. I mean, for right now, we're just, it's, the, it's keeping everything straightforward because this can be confusing. There is no simple always divide, always multiply. It's set up the proportion correctly based on the units. It's not as easy as before where it was just, oh, if you're doing to moles, you must divide. I don't understand like, what you mean by the, or with this chart. That's what I'm right. saying. We're not, we're not using the chart yet. All, this, this is easier. All we're doing is just writing down what we start with and just converting from one unit to the other. 
I mean, all we did right here on the chart, if you have molecules, where does molecules go? Right there. Molecules is a particle, correct? So all we did right now is convert from particles of A to particles of B by using the conversion factor, which we just thought up, which is 3 to 2 in this case. That's all, that's all the chart played a role in, which you don't really need right now. Uh, let's do another one because why not? So, let's say this. Uh, if you have new problem. Yeah, I'll move it up in a minute. Yeah, you, like I said, you can't do this without a reaction. And if you're not given a reaction, then it's assumed uh, that you can figure out the reaction to then, to then use. And the whole point that I want you to recognize out of all this is that, here, I'll write the reaction down here again. The whole Would point, always, be a always. The whole point that I want you to recognize is that uh, no matter what you're, whatever you're using, there is no set formula. Like you see how we started with the product on this one? That's not always gonna be the case. In this case, we're using a reactant. So there is no set like, oh, I'm always going to use this first one, then I'm going to use the second one. It doesn't work like that. Instead, let's just say, you know, 50 molecules of N2. So write it out. So if you have 50 molecules of N2, how many molecules of H2 will react with it? Does it mention ammonium at all? Does it mention ammonia at all? NH3, is it ever mentioned? No. No, so you, I mean, it doesn't matter right now at all. You know, you can ignore it. Now... What do we know? We have to put molecules of N2 down here because you just have to. Good. Good. And then you want to know molecules of H2, so you write that up there. Now, our reaction, uh, you know, our coefficients are three hydrogens to one nitrogen taken directly from the coefficients. Remember, if there's nothing there, you put one. And what will this give you? 150 molecules. How do you know use The way you know is because you know you're converting from you're converting from molecules of one thing to molecules of another. So you got to use coefficients. Is that coefficients here? Pardon? Yeah, I mean they're the they're these numbers right here given to you in the problem. Like that'll be given to you. So all you're going to have to do is interpret, basically, what, what it's asking. All right. Um, let me show you one other one. So this is using molecules. Now, we can do the same thing using moles as well. It doesn't change anything except you write moles instead of molecules. So let me show you uh, one other type of question here. So let's look at this reaction. I'd like you to write it out too. Let's see, we got four HBr plus. There you go. So there's your reaction. What? Yeah, go ahead. Now. No. Go to the no, it's not. Oh. Now. You signed it. Did I? No. <laughs> Hi, buddy. You can pause your recording. Now. <laughs> Sadly. Sadly, no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I you <laughs> anyway. Now. Uh, what we've got, we've got this equation here. Now, let me write out another problem here that I want you to see. So let's say you have 27.4 moles of HBr 
okay? It reacts with excess O2. Uh, and you write that, then you say, how many moles of H2O are produced? So, you know, I know I wrote this quickly. Sorry, it's a little bit messy. Uh, so you have 27.4 moles of HBr, hydrobromic acid. Okay, it reacts with excess O2. How many moles of H2O are produced? Now, what does it say? Mole of what? H2O HBR. or HBR. Now, the question here, notice three different things are mentioned, HBR, O2, and H2O. Which one do we not care about? What do we think? One of these three we can cancel out. It doesn't matter. We can cross it off. Well, let's, let's say this. Um, think about the s'more example again. Let's say you are doing a reaction with the s'mores. You've got, you got 10 graham crackers, you got 5 marshmallows, but you've got 7,000 pieces of chocolate. Which one of those is not going to really, I mean, you're never going to run out of it for the, for the, 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 chocolate. the chocolate. It's excess. It doesn't have any role. So you ignore the excess. So anytime you see excess something, it's just like, it's like, don't worry about it. It's saying you've got more than enough of it. It doesn't matter. So all we care about is the, the hydrobromic acid, the HBr, and the H2O. So let's start out, we say 27.4 moles of HBr, and we do exactly what we did before. Moles of H... What? You might need more. So moles of HBr, and we're converting to moles of H2O. Now all you've got to do is take the coefficients and plug them in. And this is why you must label your units, because that's how you know what coefficient goes on top, what coefficient goes on the bottom. If you don't do that, it won't make sense. So, uh, what coefficient does go on top here? What's the number? Two. Two. Because that's what your coefficient for water is. What about HBr? Four. It's four, so what does this come out to be? Yep, so you get 13. Hang on. Okay, why don't we what? Why don't we use this at all? Because it wasn't ever mentioned. It's it's just see this is one of the things you got to get used to. It it's not mentioned the problem, so it doesn't play a role at all. Because it it would be mentioned if if it mattered. And again, it, you know the s'more example. I mean, if I tell you you have, you know, five. You know, if you have four marshmallows, I mean, and you have eight pieces of graham cracker, you can figure out how many s'mores you could make with that, right? Assuming you had enough chocolate, but it doesn't ever mention the chocolate, right? So it's just, if it's not mentioned, it doesn't matter. Okay? What? Oh, sorry. She she, she made me thinking about the, the BR. Yeah. Sorry. So, are there questions on this type of problem? Okay, last one then, and then we're done. Last one, and then we are then we are done. So let's look at. We're going to use the same equation. So this is another problem. Now we did moles, we did molecules, and we did moles. Okay, that is down here. That's particles. That's moles. Now we've got to do volume. Okay. So for volume, all you've got to do is basically the same type of relationship. So let's let's look at the problem. Uh,
Now this problem seems like it is uh, long and annoying, and it kind of is. However, most of what I just wrote is totally unnecessary. The point is that you so you can see it and get used to it. Did it get kind of messy there? Sorry. Uh, it react with it for the reaction to go to completion. Sorry, I got tired of writing after a while. I should type it now. I will. Now, if you have 12 uh, cubic decimeters of hydrobromic gas, HBr, how many cubic decimeters of O2 are needed to react with it for the reaction to go to completion? Now, I'm going to tell you right now, nothing uh, after this little line right here means anything in this problem to you. I mean, you assume the reaction is going to completion. All you know is, you know, you have so many things of HBr, you need to know how many cubic decimeters of O2 are needed to react with, for the reaction to go to completion. That that just makes the problem make sense to a chemist. But that doesn't really matter in terms of, you know, how you're going to solve the problem. It just makes stuff make sense, logically. Because if, if the reactions go to completion, then everything's screwed up. But you have to get used to a, it kind of not letting things like that bug you. So, uh, let's actually just set it up. 12 cubic decimeters of HBr. And you've got cubic decimeters of HBr down here. What must go above it then? What are we converting to? Yep. So we can do this with moles, molecules, or volumes, units of volume, which in this case is cubic decimeters, which remember is a liter. So our coefficients are uh, 4 for HBr and 1 for O2. What does that produce? You get three cubic decimeters of O2. Because 12 times 1 divided by 4 gives you that. 